here we go. Welcome to Pentorm at Newmarket Harley Davidson. And today I have a special guest with me. This is Alan. Hello, how are you doing? All right? Watch his channel, Helmet Head. You've seen him before. And uh, he's going to be riding this beautiful machine, the Lowrider ST. Probably the best selling Harley Davidson currently available. And uh, the weather is shit. Look. And uh, the worst day possible for riding the most glitzy Harley Davidson you can buy the breakout. So let's have a look at it close up now before it gets covered in mud and slime here outside Newmarket Harley. So the breakout, new for 2023, or is it? Well, breakout's been around a while. I think they stopped manufacture last year and they started again for this year. But the big difference is, oh, looking glitzy as hell, the 117 engine. So that is a serious amount extra power over the 114, a bit more punch. It's got to be the most mega pose bike. It's going to be loud. We've got stage one pipes on here. Look at all that chrome. And uh, well, not the best day for <laughs> such a chrome ridden bike. It's going to be gray colored soon. So let's go around so you can have a look at it now before we get riding. Unfortunately, he hasn't got his comms today, so uh, there won't be the mobile batter. Ban batter? There won't be the mobile banter you've heard before. But we'll stop and do some of that anyway. Whoa, ho, ho, listen to that. Whoa. Whoa. I have to say, first impressions very comfortable and the seats are a bit firmer than my fat bob and uh, quite wide for my big bum now corners it's got a huge rear tyre I'm a little bit cautious around the corners but actually oh the sun's coming out actually it's nowhere near as as I expected. Um, so those of you might recall many many years ago I had a Victory Hammer which had a 240 rear tyre as well just like this narrow front big rear very similar in respect to geometry and uh, to get it around corners you had to really sort of muscle those handlebars I thought I'd be doing the same today yeah it needs more counter steering but it, it's fine. So as you can see, it's got a minimalistic screen. It's very clear. You can see the speed, the RPM, 
really relevant mostly um, some little lights down here but I quite like that it really suits this bike style we have one of my favorite things as standard cruise control oh yeah love the cruise control let's do that and we can do that I had to have it fitted to that box so this bike has been fitted with stage one what does stage one mean well stage one takes a standard engine with, as it comes from Harley Davidson manufacturing plant and adds in better breathing what do I mean by that so the engine can suck in more air and it can expel the exhaust gases out more easily thereby making it faster more powerful as standard the 117 has a heavy what they call the heavy breather which I'll come on to in a little while down near my right leg and uh, that allows it to breathe really well so it's already stage one on the breather the standard exhaust though isn't stage anything so to get a stage one to get it breathing and get it breathing properly you need to swap that exhaust out and of course it gives a bit more of light <laughs> at the time of making this video today Fat Bob is having its upgrade to the stage 4 being done right now so at the moment I can't compare it to what stage 4 was like this is stage 1 Fat Bob 114 uh, I had it upgraded 3 years ago to stage 2 that made a huge difference with the torque count. Now, I haven't quite given it the power yet because of the you know, traffic, etc. But this is feeling pretty similar in terms of torque and pull on this stage one, 117, compared to my stage two, 114. So I'm thinking if you stage two this, it's going to be very, very satisfying very satisfying very satisfying uh, alas no longer will I be able to compare it because well not alas haha excitedly I shall have the one the three one here we go I would say on the torque level torque cam on the 114 there are similar weight lights they this is probably not quite got the same punch. Right, let's see what this is like for acceleration. We're in second gear. There we go. Oh. <laughs> it's quite a quick beast. Let's go on to riding position. Uh, it, very, very similar to that one. Same full control, seat position very similar, maybe slightly forward. The bottom, the bottom's a little bit further, closer to the tank. Or it feels that way with the seat, only slightly. Handlebars a little bit wider, but similar sort of level. So the riding position I'm quite used to. Seems to noisy car in front. Seems to have more, or sorry, seems to have less wind protection. Even though Fat Bob's got no fairing, I think the little sort of binnacle around the headlight keeps some of the air off you. So interesting. Just such a small item as that can make a difference. So yeah, it's a really proper cruiser position, pose position. Because I'm six foot one, the heavy breather air filter down there does get in the way of my right leg, and. Uh, not a big problem, but I would change that for a flatter filter, similar to Fat Bob. One of the Screaming Eagle heavy breathing air filters, but not one that sticks out like this. Now, I think those of you who have got uh, shorter, more normal length legs, it's not going to be a problem. But for me it is, because I can't get my foot square on the right hand foot peg, which means also I'm only just touching the edge of the brake pedal. So it's a, a big consideration for me. Uh, if I was to buy a bike with the heavy breather and the four controls like this I'd have to uh, change that air filter not a problem though because plenty of really nice 
uh, air filters available, not just from Harley, from other places as well. The great thing, again, if you've not had a Harley, you've not had, why get a Harley? One of the reasons is you, there's so many things you can change on them. It's so easy to create your own machine to your absolute specification. Okay, cost money. And that's why most people who ride a Harley, dare I say it, are over 50. <coughs> people who've paid the mortgages off and uh, whatever. But anyway, sadly, um, it seems to be the case. Of course, I'm not quite 50 yet. I don't look anywhere near that age. You notice the big rear tire and little front, front one is the tighter corners like this, you know. It's just getting used to it, but it's, uh, you know, much slower at turning. At higher speeds, the sort of Fintor sort of levels of cornering, which isn't a lot, is pretty good. It's fine, absolutely perfect. Just, yeah, it's just got a different feel. We're deep in the forest now, and uh, from the salmon who's behind me on the low rider ST, and we pull over somewhere beautiful as it could be for a walk around. So let's have a walk around with this fantastic machine. Dear Fentor viewers, we're now in the forest near Thetford. It's uh, somewhere quiet. We hope it's going to stay quiet. Now, Alan's doing his professionalism over there. He's getting all prepared. He's got his tripods out. He's His YouTubes are well, he puts a lot of effort in, so watch his channel. Well, I put minimal effort in, so please keep watching all that. <laughs> anyway, um, we're sort of taking a turn to film each other's bike and all that sort of stuff. At the moment, mine is a helmet store, as you can see. So here's the Breakout 117. It's a stunning looking bike, probably the most stunning Harley Davidson you can buy for parking outside the pub, posing and just riding here with Alan. I've had more people turn around and look. Okay, it's quite loud. More people turn around and look and stare as it's gone by. The shining chrome. And despite the wet roads, it stayed looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, so why would you buy this rather than Fat Bob that I've already got? I think it is for the looks. It's because it's going to draw the draw the eye. So let's go around some of the features that are quite different to the Fat Bob 114. Of course, the biggest difference is the engine, the 117. 10% more horsepowers as standard. That's quite a lot. I'm saying on my ride that this is really feeling very similar to Fat Bob Stage 2. Stage 2 this, it's going to be quite something. The sound is awesome with the Stage 2. Vance and Hines pipes there, they all, that looks in keeping with the bike. I love the rear indicators here. They're really quite funky. Uh, again, better than the Fat Bob. A standard, the cruise control is fantastic. I like the riding position. And as I said on the ride, everything's good apart from my long legs hitting the heavy breather. So, remove that, put a, a nice pancake but sim similarly, high flow air filter on and you're sorted. Single disc at front. Well, at Fentor speeds, it's not a problem. At high speeds of other riders, there's not as much stopping power. If you're going to be going 90 everywhere, 100 miles an hour, maybe you should be going for the Lowrider ST or the Fat Bob for that stopping power at the front. The big rear tyre isn't proving the problem I thought it would do. Round corners, round slow corners, it is that little bit more hesitant to turn. But once you're rolling, and if you're not leaning too far, you don't really notice. It's absolutely fine. So I just want to ask Alan, you know, what do you think to the look of these two bikes? Um, he's been riding the Lowrider ST behind is the breakout. So for me, if I was going to buy one straight away, the breakout, that oozes sex appeal, doesn't it? I mean, look at the chrome, look at the exhaust, look at the wheels. Every single bit of it oozes sex appeal. 
But if I was going on a little weekend adventure and still wanted that bit of pop and bang, then it would have to be the Lowrider ST because it's got the panniers, it's got the wind protection. So it all depends what I want. If I want a weekend bit of fun to ride out with my mates, grab a coffee, look sexy, definitely the breakout. Weekend away, definitely that one. So I want both. I need both in my life. I just need to find a way of buying both, pretty much. There you go. <laughs> so Alan's going to be uh, popping together a super video on his his riding experience with the Lowrider ST. So get onto his channel and watch that. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy both videos that we've made. Both quite different. Mine's a shit one, his is a good one. <laughs> it's not true. Yours is good, mine's the rubbish bonk as well. <laughs> That's pretty much the way it is. There you go. So let's look at the price of this bike. £24,000 UK price. So that's £5,000 more than a fat bob like mine would be brand new today. Is it worth the extra? Well, it probably is. You've got 10% more power. You've got the pose. You've got all that chrome. You've got fat rear tyre. But actually, it all depends on what you're looking for and what you're willing to pay, really. So we get to listen to the... The sound of the 117. What an awesome pair of bikes. You can really see why the Lowrider ST for £20,000, which is what Alan's riding, is popular. You've got that mega engine, you've got the fairing, you've got the look, you've got the panniers, lots of black, so it's easy to keep clean. <laughs> With stage one, brilliant. Here we go. limit perfect because much more when you start getting blown backwards. I'm, I'm quite surprised just how much more wind is on me than is on my chest and my helmet and stuff on that bomb. That bomb doesn't have a screen or anything and yet it must be the headlight cow blowing that air up and over a little bit. Surprising really. Here we're coming up to a corner here. Let's see what it's like going around this. We're off a sharp corner. Need to second gear. It doesn't encourage you like that one, but it's fine. Not unsafe. It's just slower turning. But to uh, plan that line, it sit, sat on that corner beautifully. Not really a big deal. You can feel it rolling round on that big rear tyre. Once it's round, and it's uh, pretty good. You're certainly going to be very happy with it. Keeps the line nicely. Lovely. I have to say, the 117 is definitely quite noticeably more powerful than the standard 114. That extra torque and horsepower, you really noticing. It's a lovely piece of road. Look at that. And even with the big fat tyre, great keeping. Around the corners it is a lot of fun. Not that I'm breaking it that much. Awesome. So even though one can hustle this beast along, it's not Quite in the same league as Fat Bob or the ST behind me. Not written the ST, but my assumption. Um, the way Fat Bob turns in and goes around corners is quite in advance of this. But it isn't bad. I mean, it goes around corners fine. It's safe. It's stable. It's just the bike to choose if you want to go rapidly around the corners, if that's making sense. I've been really enjoying riding the breakout today fantastic machine absolute
perfect pose bike with all the chrome glitziness you're going to stand out when you park it at the pub the cafe whatever and it goes like hell that 117 engine that extra power fantastic a big thank you to the guys at Newmarket Harley Davidson for letting me borrow this today and for Alan on the ST watch his video uh, above if you like what you see with this bike and you wonder is it for you well the only way to find out is the test ride so get along to Newmarket book yourself a test ride get out on this beast big smiles are guaranteed well they were well I've been smiling anyway and uh, you'll have fun thank you ever so much for watching Fen Tour today if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and we'll see you again very soon Bye-bye.